For about two months, the Nairobi Serena Hotel became a center of attraction both nationally and internationally. It's here in their money room where talks on the national accord were led. Negotiations that kept the nation gazing. Would there be a political deal or no deal? What are some of the intrigues that characterized the talks and what took them so long? That the 2007 presidential election would be hotly and viciously contested wasn't a secret. After being fired from cabinet in 2005, ODM leader Raila Odinga assembled a political machinery he was confident would sweep the sitting president Mwai Kibaki out of power. On his part, in his characteristic laid-back style, Kibaki did not appear shaken or in a hurry to also marshal his charges. In fact, by early September 2007, he didn't even have a party he would be using to defend his seat. It forced his handlers to hurriedly form Party of National Unity, PNU, which had to team up with NAC Kenya, plus the official opposition party at that time, Kanu, to face off with Raila Odinga's ODM. It was an election whose stakes were high that saw for the first time in the world an official opposition leader Uhuru Kenyatta fail to run for presidency and instead support the re-election of an incumbent. The Electoral Commission of Kenya, ECK, declared that President Kibaki had trounced Raila Odinga in a tight race, despite ODM getting the highest number of members of parliament, having one in six out of the then eight former provinces. The outcome was disputed, a standoff that had begun at KICC when results were delayed. ODM Pentagon members, chief agents, could hear nothing from ECC officials, while PNU stood their ground. Ten years down the line, a Kenya party leader and veteran politician Martha Wangare Karua sets the record straight on what exactly was unfolding at KICC. I was saying that time, there can only be one referee in a match. And parties to the match can never announce their results. So whatever you are saying of the referee, the referee has to announce. You come and sit here. Come and notify the seat. You announce. You announce. So what was the bone of contention between ODM and PNU that led to a heated exchange as the then Electoral Commission of Kenya, now defunct, watched helplessly? We actually saw a few mistakes. And one mistake I would like to highlight, which we never highlighted then, was the case of Chepalungu, where the votes of ODM were recorded as 337,000, when the population of Chepalungu constituency then was not even that. The IEBC quickly said it was a typographical error, and they brought another cheat showing the votes were 37,000. Actually, when the IBC said this was a typographical error, I actually genuinely believed it, only later to realize that it was a deliberate inflation of the votes of the opposite side. But I must admit that later on we were to know that even some of the PNU side's votes were exaggerated. Just like Krigra said, that both sides ex exaggerated, you see? The nation was gripped with political anxiety. Initial live broadcasts indicated Raila Odinga was ahead of President Mwai Kibaki before an order stopping the media from running results was issued. It was communicated that only ECK would make the final announcement and for several hours, no information or results were being relayed from ECK. The clock was ticking. When we went through the, the files, we all agreed that IBC could now announce the results. But when we went to the hall, the opposition obstructed, forcing IBC to announce through the radio. Lugari Member of Parliament Ayub Savula was a senior political reporter with the Standard newspaper at the time and was among journalists who witnessed the dramatic turn of events. Rainbow, 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 rainbow. 
there was argument between a group led by Martha Karua and another team led by William Samoe Ruto. In fact, they almost fought Karua, Karua and Ruto over the result because Ruto that time was on the railer side, Karua was on the Kibaki side. It reached a point the GSU now came in and surrounded the whole uh, action center. Within 10 minutes, lights were off. And that's the time they opened a path, the GSU opened a path for the chairman Kiwitu to enter a car that was parking behind KICC. And the cars drove as a convoy from KICC up to State House, where the results were now officially declared and Kibaki sworn in as a president. Mimi mwai kibaki na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za urais kwa jamhuri ya Kenya. Mwai Kibaki was declared winner that evening on 30th December 2007 and was hurriedly sworn in as darkness settled in to avoid a constitutional crisis. There was an explosion of protests in various parts of the country by ODM supporters. A trend that continued for several days and soon it became weeks. It was now a full-blown post-election violence. <laughs> Hundreds were killed. Thousands are putted from their homes and property millions destroyed. <laughs> Kenya was thrown into a political crisis, forcing the international community, specifically the African Union, to step in and save the situation. Kenya was on the brink of precipice. Remember the then president of Ghana, John Kufu, in his capacity as AU chairman, he came and paid a visit on President Mwai Kibaki. And I was present during that visit. And he did suggest that something had to be done to st stop the violence in the country and to save the nation. And he suggested that we must have talks with the opposition to be mediated by somebody appointed by the AU. And he is the one who suggested Kofi Annan. However, there was a problem. PNU's side flatly rejected now South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, whom ODM wanted as part of the mediation team. In fact, Cyril Ramaphosa flew into Kenya, but information available to PNU was that uh, Cyril had, in a way, helped in financing and supporting the ODM campaigns. So he was not seen as uh, a possible uh, uh, honest broker in, 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 the, in the discussions that he was going to be probably partisan. You remember, we are leading the talks, but we are messengers of our party. When we went to consult our party, our intelligence was saying that Cyril Ramaphosa was close to the ODM brigade and to Raila Odinga. And it is not because we believed he would not be a good umpire. But you see, justice is, a, is a appearances also. It should not only be done, but be seen to be done. So for those reasons, we requested that another person do come. And it caused a diplomatic tiff. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan was given the responsibility of leading a panel of African eminent persons who would mediate between PNU and ODM to cease fire and broker a political deal to save the country, which was on the brink of precipice. The biggest challenge was bringing the two protagonists on the negotiating table. We were not even shaking hands. 
And I think it was after three days that the talks were moved to a more appropriate atmosphere and bigger room to, to give way, you know, to give room even to a secretariat and all. And uh, Kofi Annan ensured that at least we had informal uh, sitting where we conversed, shook hands and all that, you know. So for it was a very tense uh, situation. And so on. But uh, my colleagues like Mother Karua would not shake hands with anybody for a start. Uh, you remember she had some acrimonious exchanges with even Ben Mukapa at one point, with Kofi Annan himself at another. Initial stages were extremely difficult. Yeah. The initial 10 days or so were extremely difficult uh, to get people to, to start thinking and talking honestly. Uh, on the need to bring the country together. Uh, because you, you, you must talk about unifying the country without completely disillusioning your constituency. You see, the, 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 there are people who voted for us then and people who believed that we had won the election. All right? And that election had been stolen uh, from us. Um, this other side now had the, the instruments of state uh, with them. They controlled the police, they controlled the army, and now they're in office. But even as they sat on that negotiating table, each delegation had their own list of irreducible minimums. Our first choice was to go for a fresh uh, presidential elections. Uh, and we said if that was not possible, then we can have a, a grand coalition where power is shared and that there should be portfolio balance uh, depending on the strength of the members of parliament. But the executive authority will be shared between the president and the, and the prime minister. So this, those instructions were quite clear. But you know, on the PNU side already, they had appointed ministers. Uh, Kibaki was sitting in State House, uh, and uh, this question of was something they didn't want to hear about. Uh, and then, um, secondly, we had said also if we have to share power, then we have to constitutionalize the arrangement. The final point for PNU was that the accord was not going to be in the Constitution that there will be no amendment to the Constitution. Those were my instructions, you know? But the president on his own went and agreed to the accord being entrenched in the Constitution. We had hardliners on both sides of the divide. We had hardliners in the, on the PNU wing at that time, and uh, we also had hardliners on the, on the uh, ODM side, um, people who, were extremely passionate in, uh, in, in terms of the position that they had taken. Not once, not twice, talks at the basement Amani room at the Nairobi Serena Hotel would be adjourned abruptly, at times suspended. It can now be revealed that that was occasioned by powerful individuals who continued pulling strings behind the scenes in the PNU coalition. There were people, uh, particularly from uh, the government side, who were extremely cagey at that time. And um, they did not trust who was there to negotiate on their behalf. The instructions were all coming from the president, who of course would consult with the larger group. And I think why it appeared that we are the ones, we were the ones calling for recess more. Remember, ODM had nothing to lose. They are asking for a share of power that they don't have. The PNU side seemed to be in such a situation where they could not seem to be talking independently. I think in their back room, where I think you had... Uh, the, the people like the then Michuki and others who are somewhere. It was like uh, these people could not uh, even put a comma or a full stop. This 
is KTN News. African villages, there are people who may have dropped out of mainstream learning due to factors that have no relationship whatsoever with their natural intelligence. Now you can imagine, you built your company, you work there for close to 30 years, you are an adult doing more than 40 years, you are asked to go back to class with children the age of your children or your grandchildren. Yeah, that's hello in Russian. Come on and all to the Stan Collymore show. I never looked at, you know, is he left-footed? Is he slower than the other one? I was faster than anything. I was going to score no matter what. The World Cup in Brazil, I was 10 years old. And I said, oh, my God, Brazil is the best team. We're going to play the World Cup. We're going to be champion. Then Brazil lost. Whether it's a fact that they're doing it on purpose or whether they're doing it subconsciously, it happened. I think this has been going on for years. I haven't seen anything that's caused that. There's no reason for people to feel like that. Alejandro <laughs> Pale, Ukiopata mzungu, yule yule Alejandro atakutreat hivyo hivyo. Hata wewe bwana ukitreat bibi yako bwanako vizuri, bwana pia atakutreat vizuri. Ni kweli wanaume wa Kenya hawajui huba. Nakwambia kwanza mavazi mwenyewe manukato, usafi chumbani. Kisha ukishamaliza hayo, mapishi dada. Wanaume wa Kiafrika si wanaume wazuri kwa sababu tabia zao ni moja. Twende ugaibuni hao wanaume wanajua kushika, wanajua kupenda, wanajua kupeana. Mapenzi ni kitu kinachostahili ukomavu wa hali ya juu. This is KTN News. A major threat to the Serena talks would be the Kilaguni retreat, whose details on what transpired remained a mystery for long. The chief negotiator Kofi Annan and his panel decided to switch base from Serena to Kilaguni. They believed time was ripe to put the icing on the cake and declare a political deal. That was not to be. There were reports that despite President Kibaki flying down to Kilaguni, no talks took place between him and his rival, ODM's Raila Odinga. That was on, on the verge of signing the accord. We wanted to brush up a few things so that uh, everybody's at par in terms of levels of comfort, uh, levels of uh, appreciation, and we move together. Now, when we reached uh, Kelaguni, uh, certain things that uh, we can't say to the media, but you are right that uh, Raila and uh, Kibaki never got to meet. No meeting was held, uh, apart from the preliminaries, because this was a day when now Raila and Kibaki were to sit, mundu humundu, as I always say, and agree that what has been agreed is agreed to them. 
But uh, each one of them, of course, had uh, those behind them who were pushing and pulling, either for self-interest or for whatever interest, and we ended up uh, Kilaguni to being a failure. It was after the failure of Kilaguni II that we came back to Nairobi that now the visit of Jakaya Kikwe that I've talked about followed and that now uh, helped us to break the impasse. There was the time when we went to Kilaguni that uh, a bit of space was found because we went there all as a committee. Uh, but there was a moment when we said, why can't the lawyers sit, the lawyers in the committee? to find out, you know, what kind of arrangement would work. And we sat in a, a, a meeting with the, with the Mutola, uh, Wetangula and Martha Karua and myself. I was the only lawyer in the, on, on the ODM on the side. Um, and we didn't agree on anything, but we we're saying these are the examples that we have of how power has been shared uh, and it's possible. Uh, but of course the PNU side did not want you know, that arrangement to be constitutionalized. Nothing much. I think it's just like letting people get used to an idea. You remember Kofi Annan had made a press conference saying we are going to have a grand coalition government and PNU, including the president, had a press conference telling him off and he apologized. It was like marketing an idea. And they had brought this professor from Germany to talk to us about Grand Coalition. You see, because we were having government, we were totally resistant to anything of an equal sh power sharing. The Kilaguni fiasco deepened the rift between ODM and PNU as talks dragged on at Serena. As we were in Serena, Kibaki was busy appointing the cabinet. All right, so that was not a very good uh, show of goodwill at that time. Um, because he literally named his cabinet, uh, he named about 50% of, of the cabinet then. Kofi Annan, I think he had been to a lot of these negotiations, hard negotiations. What he used to do, which was, uh, you know, uh, very effective, that he didn't, uh, he didn't um, go on until you agreed on everything. His position was that uh, on anything that you agreed, however minor it is, is, is recorded as a resolution and everybody signs. ODM was increasingly getting under pressure and perhaps feeling the weight was its lead negotiator, then Musalia Mdavadi, who was Odinga's running mate in the 2007 presidential election. Balance between uh, establishing a credible uh, outcome and not losing your core constituencies uh, can be an extremely challenging thing. And to me, I think that was it. Uh, it was not easy because some would feel you have ceded too much. Uh, uh, Others would say, no, 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 uh, break the deal. And, 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 and you see, uh, it, 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 you had to really manage this. Even when going back to brief uh, your various uh, organs and other players, uh, we also had to manage that process because some of them would say, why don't you break off the, 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 the talks? That is not what we wanted. Uh, others would say, let's just go to, if it means going back to the trenches, let's go to the trenches. That marked the turning point of the Serena talks. It had reached a point where the elastic limit could not be exceeded. The center could not hold anymore. The Serena talks collapsed. So when now we were taking stock and going back to on the, on the things we had not agreed, then even on the things that we had agreed, the PNU side now started making, uh, you know, uh, they started making a, a, a what, a, a different case and withdrawing their position, earlier position. So uh, Kofi Annan said, now if you're not agreeing, I'm going to speak to your principles. I think talks always collapse when the people negotiating. 
are told you can't move beyond a certain, a certain line. So your principles tell you, if this stage reaches, then you have to go ask for recess. You see? This you cannot make a decision on your own. And that's common in talks. Because if you are your own agent, then you can move. And that's why at some stage towards the end, the mediator Kofi Annan decided that he was now only going to deal with the two principles, President Kibaki and Right Honorable Raila Odinga. And that's how the final deal was sealed. A move by Kofi Annan to call off the talks caused political shockwaves across the continent and beyond. President Mwai Kibaki had to reach out to a neighbor as immediate former Tanzania President Jakaya Murisho Kikwete disclosed during his address to the Kenyan parliament few weeks before he retired from office. Nipofika Rais Kibaki ya kaniambia mambo mawili. Kwamba ni siondoke, kwanza ni mwambie kofi ya nani ya siondoke. Mana katua likuwa mishavuncha mazungumzo. Na alienilitia ujumbe Moses Matangura. So I was sent by Mzee Kibaki to receive him at the airport and on our way I told him, you know, things are not going very well, my friend. Uh, Kofi Annan is almost throwing in the towel. At the time Kikwete came, he came at the tail end when His Excellency Kofi Annan had already taken to talking only to the two principals. He came to Harambe House, therefore we were not there. But when they agreed, that's now when they called the Attorney General, and that's when we started writing their code. So we do not know what magic they played. The final deal was brokered by the now retired president. Kwanza nifanya mkutano na uhu, na, na, na Raila. Mwishimwa Raila. Yuko hapa juu ni mambiwa. Tukazungumza, badaye nikienda kumuona raisi, tukazungumza, nikiatua huku na yapeleka huku, nikiatua huku na yapeleka huku. Mbaka tukafika mahali, tukaelewana. Mwafaka ukapatikana. Kwa lugha kule kwetu, mwafaka ukapatikana. Tukatoka pale nje, tukakutana. Wakubwa wale wakatia saini, Kenya ikapata mweleke ompi wa kisiasa. A deal had finally been reached, but there was a new twist. As the two principals, Mwaiki Bakke and Raila Odinga, together with Kofi Annan and Jakaya Kikwete, struck a consensus, all PNU negotiators were left out. One member of ODM, James Orengo, was allowed into the room. The Kibaki side had to call in the then Attorney General Amos Wako. Kibaki's men were a worried lot. We were in that room with the, with the principals, uh, Raila and Kibaki, Wako and myself. Outside on the door to Kibaki's office, people were knocking, Mudaura, uh, Gichangi, Uh, his senior ministers were out there, the vice president. Everybody wanted to know what was going on. And they were scared that leaving Kibaki alone in the room, the, he was going to let them down. Kibaki initiated some of the ministries, uh, including uh, foreign affairs, which naturally belongs to the presidency, and so on. But uh, my friend Mother Karua would not have it. Uh, I remember when we signed the accord outside uh, Harambe. Harambe House. Karua was not there. Uh, she was in disgust and she was very upset and annoyed. But Mze Kibaki took it uh, in his stride and he, I remember him telling me, my dear young man, life is not about people you like. Life is about people you live with. All eyes were trained at the Harambe house. It was 28th February 2008. Exactly two months after the 2007 general election that had plunged the country in turmoil. It was the first time since his election in December 2002 that President Kibaki had set foot at his Harambe House office, where he was sitting on the same table with his challenger, Raila Odinga. The two had been cornered. Final ceasefire document. 
the national accord had to be penned. In that room, as they were, and Wako and myself were sent to go and finalize the draft, which we went and did at Serena, uh, and then came back with a draft. And uh, we decided that because, you know, there are people are going to raise a lot of issues, uh, when we come with a draft, Raila, Kibaki, and Kofi Annan as a witness, they must sign each page of the accord. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Kibaki did a great thing on that day, because had he allowed his men to come into the room, we would not have no accord. So when we came back to the room, they tried to get in again, they were not allowed. And everybody was told now to go downstairs where we're going to have a press conference. That afternoon, the national accord was signed at the entrance of Harambe House. As I announced earlier today, we do have a deal. Thus, our work on the governance structure for Kenya has successfully been completed today. <laughs> Giving birth to the Grand Coalition government, with President Mwai Kibaki sharing executive power with Prime Minister Raila Odinga.